Let's take a look at example 5.4.6. It has been stated that about 41% of adult workers have a high school diploma but do not pursue any further education. If 20 adult workers are randomly selected, find the probability that at most 12 of them have a high school diploma but do not pursue any further education. How many adult workers do you expect to have a high school diploma but do not pursue any further education? This is an example of a binomial distribution. We can start out and let x be the number of workers who have a high school diploma but do not pursue any further education. But remember that we need a numerical value, so x is a random variable of the number of workers. Looking at this, we can say that x could be 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 20. We have this 20 adult workers are randomly selected, so we're going to let 20 be our number of trials. So n is 20. Find the probability that at most 12 of them have a high school diploma but do not pursue further education. We're looking for p of x and something to do with 12. At most 12 means 12 is the largest number we can have. So we're not asking for exactly 12. It would say exactly if we were looking for exactly 12. Since it says at most 12, 12 is the highest. So we're going to set up our inequality as x less than or equal to 12. At most 12, 12 is the largest, but we could have less. And that's why we have x less than or equal to 12. Other things that we need to know before we can start using anything to calculate the binomial distribution. We need to know the probability of success and probabilities often are disguised as percentages in these types of problems. So we're going to take that 41% and change it to a decimal 0.41. Move the decimal place over two spots to get it into a decimal. So now that we have information, I am going to draw the graph to use it for illustrative purposes. A binomial distribution is a discrete distribution, meaning we have a bar chart. The idea here is I'm going to just estimate 12 is somewhere, and we're looking for the total area 12 and less. So we just want to make sure that that makes sense. Since we're less than or equal to 12, we're looking for all of the area to the left of 12 in this bar chart that would represent our binomial distribution. Keep these numbers in mind. We're going to need them when we move over into Excel. In order to use the binomial distribution in Excel or Google, we'll start out with an equal sign because we want the technology to calculate something for us. Now, even though I'm using Excel, Google is going to work exactly the same way. So the binomial distribution starts out B-I-N-O-M. And you can see there's several different ones. The one we're going to use is binome.dist. Binome.inv, or inverse, we generally don't talk about the inverse for the binomial distribution. Usually we are looking for the probabilities given the x values. An inverse function would be looking for the x values given the probabilities. It's a little bit more complicated and it's outside the scope of our class. The last one, the binome dist without the dot, that's an older version of the formula. Excel decided to change some of their syntax. So let's put binome.dist in there. And Excel's prompting us number s, trials, probability s, and cumulative. Number s is the number of successes. So we're going to start out with 12, 12 successes. X is less than or equal to 12. The number of trials we had, we had 20 people selected, so we're going to put that in. Trials is our N. The probability, S, this is our probability of success. So we're going to enter 0 0.41. Make sure you put that dot in there. If you don't have the dot, you'll get an error message. So you want to make sure you convert that percentage to a decimal. The cumulative part 
depends on the type of problem that you're doing. So remember before when I showed you the graph and we're doing 12 and everything below it? Because we're doing 12 and 11 and 10 and 9 and 8 and 7 and 6 and 5 and 4 and 3 and 2 and 1 and 0, we're doing all of those. We want the cumulative part to be true. We are telling Excel to add up all of the probabilities from 12 down. That's what we mean by cumulative. We're adding them up. Just like you were doing the cumulative frequency distributions, you were adding them up. We're going to do the same thing here. And that gives us the probability 0.9737, if we're rounding to four decimal places, which is a pretty high probability that we get 12 or fewer who have a high school diploma but are not going for the higher level education. So this was P of X less than or equal to 12. I'll put that in there as a reminder. X is less than or equal to 12. What if we wanted x equal to 12? What would that look like? x equal to 12, we're still going to use the binome distribution, binome.dist. And we're going to use the same values as before, 12 successes, 20 trials, 0.41 probability. But this time, the cumulative, we're going to type in false or select false. We only want the binomial distribution function to calculate the probability of exactly 12. So the probability that I, out of 20 people randomly selected, getting exactly 12 is 0 0.04, about 4%. What if I wanted to know more than 12? So at most 12 is what we were given. This would be exactly 12. What if I wanted to know more than 12? More than 12, the notation would be x is greater than 12. But here's where we have to be careful. Because the binomial distribution is discrete, we need to know when we're setting up these inequalities whether to count that number in our calculation or not. What if I wanted less than 12? What if I wanted that inequality? The binomial distribution starts at the number that you give it, includes that probability, and if we're doing cumulative, everything below. So this time, instead of 12 successes, because S is less than 12, X does not equal 12, I'm going to go one below and say 11. And then we have the same values as before, and I'm doing less than 12, so I'm doing 11 plus 10 plus 9 plus 8, all of those probabilities. We're not actually adding the X's, we're adding the probabilities that correspond to the X. So we'll make this a cumulative distribution and say true. And notice there's a small difference between them. Do you recognize that small difference? Yeah, it's exactly what we calculated for our probability of x equals 12. If you add a2 and a4, you will get a1. Now let's talk about more than 12. In order to calculate more than 12, or more than anything, we have to, again, make sure that we're doing things in the right way. The probability calculation for binomial, if we're using the cumulative true, starts at zero and goes all the way up to the number we give it. But if I'm asking for x greater than 12, I don't want zero up to a number. I want a number up to n. I want it flipped around. If I go back to my picture for a moment, in this picture, for more than 12, I want everything to the right. So in order to get that, keeping in mind a special property of these probability distributions are that all of the probabilities add up to 1, we're going to take 
1, I forgot my equal sign, 1 and subtract a binomial distribution. And specifically, we're going to subtract, since we want more than 12, we don't want 12. More than means greater than 12. X shouldn't equal 12. We want everything above it, which means you want to subtract away from 1, 12 and below. So we're going to subtract out 12, same 20, same P, and make that cumulative true. And we get a probability that I select more than 12 out of a group of 20 with a high school diploma without going further. Now before we do one more, take a look at A1 and A6. If I take A1 and A6 and I add them together, I get one. I'm looking at at most 12, 12 and below, and more than 12 would be above 12, and I get everything. What if I wanted at least 12? At least 12, the difference here is x is greater than or equal to 12. So it's slightly different. This time we're including 12. In order to calculate this binomial distribution probability, we're still going to start with 1 minus because we've got greater than. Binom dist. Now for this particular problem, um, my mathematical symbols are covered up, but do we, do we include 12? Do we want to keep the 12? Or do we want to subtract the 12 out? Remember in the previous one, we subtracted that probability of 12 out. This time we want to keep the 12, so we're going to go one less. And going one less, we pick up the 12 and greater. There's one more technique to show you. So, so far we either have exactly, this is the only one where our binomial distribution will read false, exactly. Less than 12, we had 11 and below, and the reason I say below is because it's true. So cumulative being true, 11 and below. At most 12 goes 12 and below. More than 12, I subtract off 12 and below to get the more than. And then at least 12, I subtract 11 and below so that I keep the 12 probability in that calculation. The other type of calculation that we can have is between. And I'm going to make up some numbers. We're going to go between 10 and 14. Between 10 and 14 inclusive, I'm going to say 10 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 14. We'll make this row a little bit, the column a little bit bigger so we can see it. And then for exclusive, probability of 10 to 14, but x is strictly less than. These, be these betweens can get really tricky because you have to know which number you're including and which number you're throwing out. Let's look at some accompanying pictures for each one of these scenarios. So to the right, I have graphed the very binomial distribution for our scenario, where n is 20 and p is 0.41. On the graph, and I'm going to do this one time, but know that it translates to all of these other graphs here. 0 and 1 are really small, so we can't even see them. And then same out here with 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. They're really, really small. So small it's hard to see them. So if we're looking at p of x equals 12, we come over here to the 12, and we're finding that probability. So that probability right there, p of x equals 12, we just calculated it at 0 0.0417.
for at most 12, we find that 12 bar here. And at most means 12 is the biggest. So we're going to add up all of these bars, 12 and less. And that's how we ended up with that probability of 0.9738. If we compare at most 12 to less than 12, I'm going to find my 12 again. But this time, I'm not going to take the 12. I'm going to take everything below the 12. So notice this is a very subtle difference between the two pictures. But I'm not highlighting that 12 bar. In the, in the previous problem, I did highlight the 12 bar. And that's how we got that 0.932 one. Hopefully you're doing good so far. Let's scroll up a little bit. I'm going to identify my 12 again. At least 12 means that 12 is the smallest, at least 12. And so we would add up all of the values 12 and greater. But in order to do that, we have to say 1 minus the probability of x is less than or equal to 11, for example. So we would put 11 in that binomial distribution function, but we've got to remember we're subtracting it from 1 because we want the right-hand side. I do want to make a comment here. All of the work that we're doing right now in binomial distributions will translate almost directly into normal distributions when we start talking about continuous probability distributions in the next chapter. And the at least 12, we calculated that at 0 0.0679. I apologize for going out of order from my Excel sheet. And then we can have greater than 12. Again, identifying 12. Probability that x is greater than 12. This time I don't want to catch the 12, I just want everything above 12. And notice how much, very much smaller it is. And we can write that as this as one minus probability x less than or equal to 12. I'm subtracting off 12 and everything to the right. And again, this one, the greater than, the greater thans and the at least, we've got to put in a one minus. So between 10 and 14, we would have to say if it's including 10 and 14 or excluding them. So we'll look at both of those. So probability between 10 and 14 means x is greater than or equal to 10 and less than or equal to 14. And since we're including 10 and 14, we're, we are going to grab those bars in our calculation and we just look at probability values for 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. We're going to make Excel add them up, but it does take two binomial distribution calculations to do this. So between 10 and 14 inclusive, we're going to start with the bigger one, 14. I'm going to go back to the picture for a second. Remember that the binomial distribution calculates less than when we use the cumulative functions. So if I use the binomial distribution to calculate 14, I will get all of that area in pink. So all the area under the curve from 14 and below. But I wanna take off some of that on the end. I don't want nine and below. I want to cut those off. How do I do that? We're going to subtract off another binomial calculation with nine and less. So that's the idea behind the betweens. We take the bigger number 
and I can do this off to the side so it hopefully makes a little more sense. If that's our distribution and there's 14, we're going to take this whole area and subtract off not 10 but 9 and below because we want to include 10 in our distribution and that's how we get the 10 to 14 between. It takes some practice, struggle with it for a little bit and let's put it into our put it into our technology. So binome dist, I, I want to keep 10. Oh, I, I've got to do 14 first. So 14, 20, 24, 1, true, close that parentheses, calculate 14 and fewer. Subtract from that binome.dist. I want to keep 10, so I don't want to subtract out 10. I want to subtract out 9 and less. And we get 0.2726. Related to that, if I wanted to exclude 10 and 14, so this time I'm not counting 10 and I'm not counting 14, I just want between 11 and 13. So we could look at this as the probability of 10 less than x less than 14, or equivalently for discrete probability distributions, this is 11 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 13. So we essentially have the same problem above, we just have to know how to change the values that we have. So if we have strictly less thans, or we're excluding, we want to go one less. Other possibilities that we could have, we could have a combination of including and excluding. So we could look at um, the probability of x is greater than 10 and less than or equal to 14. We could look at x is less than or equal to 10 and less than 14. So we could have a mixture there. For these discrete probability distributions, this scenario, the probability of 10 less than x less than or equal to 14, similarly here we're going to take the first one, 11, less than or equal to x, and we keep the 14. So less than 14 is less than or equal to 13, and that will hopefully help us in our work with binomial distributions.